Hello everybody, this is Mithril Zenith, and as a follow-up for my last video on Triple Triad Tournaments, I've had some people asking me for some general tips for Triple Triad, deck building strategies, rundowns, tutorials, stuff like that. So today, we are going over deck building strategy for Triple Triad. First thing to note is that in order to build a deck, you need cards. So get more cards. You can come over to the Triple Triad Trader over here and get plenty of cards. Um, all of these cards are for direct purchase. You'll be able to see them. Um, you can also get these card packs, which contain uh, one card each, but uh, from a randomized set. If you're going to try to collect all the cards, you will need to buy many of these packs, especially stuff like Gold Triad card packs. Silver and gold packs, I think, have exclusive cards as well as some other ones. Uh, go look up some sort of tool. I recommend the triad.realist.com. It attaches to Discord, linked in the description below. When I started, uh, they used to limit your deck construction based on the number of cards you had. For instance, like you couldn't use five star cards if you didn't have a certain number of cards. I'm pretty sure that that restriction is gone now, but you still want a lot of cards, particularly some specifics. So let's get into that. Uh, to build a deck, instead of just getting the automatic uh, one based on what the game thinks is best, we're going to want to go to character, gold saucer, uh, card decks, and then select one of the deck lists here and build up. So, building a deck, what do you need to know? First of all, stars. I guess I'll just come into the uh, deck builder here. Uh, you can have only one card that is five stars. Uh, you may have one or two cards that are four or five, four stars or above. And the rest of your cards should be three stars or less. Uh, we'll get into less when we talk about reversal. But in general, you'll want to uh, place uh, play a deck that has a five, a four, and three threes. Uh, to help you along your way, there's a lot of nice filters. Click on the filter here, and then you can filter based on five star. Uh, you can also filter based on tribe. Tribe doesn't necessarily matter too much, but it does matter for Ascension and Descension. There will be another uh, video talking about all the different rule sets later on, but for the moment, what you'll need to know is that Tribe doesn't necessarily matter, but can be a nice uh, factor if you want. So, if we're looking at our 5 star cards, what are our options? You see stuff like, okay, A, 1, 9, 7, those are what are on the sides. Generally speaking, there are a couple trains of thoughts. Either you'll want something with a lot of A's or a lot of 9's. You generally don't want to play too many 5 stars uh, that are all 8's because 8's can be found on 3 star cards, 9's can be found on 4 star cards, and only five star cards can have A's. So generally, you'll want to have either a card that has two A slots, like for instance, Shadowbringers Warrior of Light, um, Varicia Galvis is a pretty common one, uh, a couple others here, if I remember right, are pretty common. Um, or you'll want cards, you know, Generally, and we'll talk about corner and wall strategy later, um, so double A's, or you'll want cards that have like double or triple nines. Therion is really common, as well as uh, Shadowbringers. Uh, where is he? I'm pretty sure it's like Shadowbringers Thancred? No, Ardbert is another one, if you, if you prefer the nines. Uh, you prefer to play on top instead of on bottom. As for the four star cards, uh, these are interesting. You either have stuff like Brute Justice, which is all sevens, 
Um, you have cards with a lot of eights, like Innocence over here. Or you'll have cards which have some nines, like the Diablo Armament. Now, as you can see, I'm allowed to place them here, but I'll get that message saying there are too many rare cards in your deck. So, let's say I want to build a deck that has focus on nines. That I don't necessarily want A's because the only other cards you'll be able to flip are other people's fours and fives. I want to focus on beating other people's threes. Well, then we want to get as many nines as possible, and then we'll play through a strategy. So then we have our three star cards. Um, as you can see, a lot of them have varying numbers on the sides, but they will never have a number higher than eight. And there's a couple cards that have double eights that you'll want to focus on. And we'll want them in, I guess, ascending order. I guess I can't. Oh, yeah, here's one. Uh, Phobad. It's a 1 1, sorry, 1 3 8 8. Yeah, this will help me to show you this. As you can see, a lot of different cards with 7s. Suzaku can be interesting if you want to play for like a 7s based strategy, and we'll talk about specific strategies later. Um, but. For instance, let's just start with like a pretty standard gen general purpose deck. Uh, one that I like is... Actually, I'll just show you the one that I use on the regular. I call it Corner Strong because I play from the corners. I have 8s, 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 9s, 9s. So, what you want to do is... With this sort of deck, you'll want to play out usually from the top right corner I've found most success with, um, playing out, you know, your eights, and then playing a nine into uh, into someone else's eight, or the very least defensively, uh, you have some very weak sides and very strong sides. You'll want to always be playing into a strong corner if you can help it. This sort of strategy uh, generally rewards defensive play, playing into the corner that you're strong on rather than offensive play because if you go and extend outward then you reveal a weak side and you're very easily taken. One last thing we want to talk about is reversal. So reverse, reversal, uh, makes strong cards weak and weak cards strong. Now generally speaking you will want to play to strengths. A reversal means you want as many weak one uh, star cards as possible. So we will confirm. Uh, we will say, hey, I want some weak cards. You want one sides, two sides, stuff like that. So while the game is generally balanced around not having too many, you know, eight, sevens and eight sides, it's also pretty well balanced around not having too many one sides. If a card came out and it had ones on every single side, that would be pretty much an instant win. Well, you generally then want to play as many ones and twos as possible, but you also need to be really careful about how high your other sides go. Like for instance, Tonberry has three twos, which is pretty good, but also has a seven. So the twos will be flipped by any one, and ones can be on anything. You can have, unlike regular play, where you can guarantee that the enemy only has two cards that can flip an eight side, their four or their five star. In reversal, you can't guarantee how many ones and what sides those ones are appearing on. So you generally will want to very, very carefully consider how many ones you play, where you play those ones, stuff like that. That said, Facing does matter. Where are your directionals? I'm actually going to save that. I, th I think that feels a little bit better. I'll have to try it out and see. Where are your directionals? Where are you strong? Where are you weak? For instance, 
I said that I like to play this deck on the top right. Why the top right and not like the top left or a different corner? Well, as you'll see, I have two strong plays from the top right corner. I have one strong play from the top left, one strong play from the bottom left, and one strong play bottom center, like any bottom, bottom aligned corner. Because of that, I am very much weighing myself to start in the top right corner. In fact, the reason why I have both of these set up is basically because I want to try and get as much use out of Anima as possible, my four star card. So I generally put cards in the order that I want to play them in. Uh, there's one rule set called order that specifically challenges you to do this, but I generally put these in the order that I want to play them in just for ease of mind's sake. Uh, one big note for order and why you should always build your decks for order is that if you get order, you have to play them one, two, three, four, five. So if you fight in, if you duel in a tournament or just against a user that has a randomized rule set, you can sometimes get order just randomly when you're not prepared for it. So number one rule for playing whenever you might get order, never, 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 never have your five star card be the last card. This is why once you know what you're doing, you should never rely on the automated deck because the auto deck will always have your three stars, four star, five star in that order. Not only does that make it so that it is generally a pretty weak play because you're never getting your strong cards until the very end of the game. It also means that if you go second, you will never be able to use your five star card. For instance, if I had it like this, like this is what the auto deck might give you. Three star, three star, three star, four star, five star. Never play this way. Always decide when you want your strong plays relative to your weak plays when going for order. And then just build a play habit around that. That's how I've seen success. That's how I took you know, a lot of third, seconds, even a first place championship. So my play style for this is I play in the top right corner. They will play somewhere else. If they play in the top left corner, boom, Anima plays there, usually flips their top left corner if they play something like Ysail. Otherwise, if they play like bottom right corner, Anima flips that as well. If they play bottom left, or if they play off of my corner play, then at least Anima is a safe play and doesn't throw me off. If I'm not playing in order, I might play Isail um, for like another safe play and then wait for them, see if they uh, trigger Anima. And then I have Therion for the bottom row uh, because it's just very safe for the most, for the most time to uh, play out and flip any one of their three star cards so long as I have a south a south wall safe and then Griffin Griffin you sail are supportive corners because if you play everything to one corner then you can sometimes just run up against a wall where they figure out your, your strategy play against it and what can you really do anyway I've rambled on Far enough. If that helped you for your general deck building strategy, let me know in the comments down below. If you'd like me to go over the differences between why play corners versus walls, uh, why play, you know, group uh, strong side, weak side versus uh, more neutral side, let me know. And then also keep an eye out because I will be doing a video in the somewhat near future at least. Uh, going over the different deck building strategies that you'll want to have in regards to different rule sets. Uh, we've covered reversal and we've talked about order, but again, plus, same, stuff like that, generally want their own deck building strategy as well. So leave a like on the video, subscribe for more content, and until next time, I'll see you in the battle hall. This is Mythical Zenith, signing out.